Today, we're going to talk about derivatives of parameterized curves. We're going to think of a parameterized curve as some motion of a particle. And then we're going to start doing some calculus stuff on it. I just set up a function that's going to be the position at time t. So y'all should see what's coming up next. But let's analyze this uh, motion as much as we can. We got this crazy function. Things aren't going in just circles. Let's think about the motion of this particle. In the x direction, we've got this parabola. So on the x, on x, y, z axis, what we're going to see is as ta at time negative infinity, the particle is going to be approaching the origin. Then it's going to, uh, when, it's, when it gets to the origin, it's going to be turning around and then heading the other direction. Also, since I brought up position at a particular time, you know velocity is going to come into the discussion. So we also notice that the velocity is the slope of the tangent line. So here, when t is very large, the particle is approaching the origin very rapidly. But as the particle gets closer to the origin, the velocity slows down, hits zero, and then cruises on up again. In the, in the y direction, we see this cubic graph. So in the y direction, it's gonna come up to the origin, kind of stop, and then just keep going away, gonna accelerate away. So here's what's gonna happen in the y direction. So in the y direction, we should see the particle speeding towards the origin, stopping at the origin, and then speeding away. And then in the z direction, I picked the boring function. Looking at this from the side, looking at this curve from the side, it's just gonna be a line going up. All right. Let's take a look at this from the positive Z axis and try to put together at least the X and Y motion. Here's the other reason I made the Z axis, uh, the Z motion nice and simple. I wanted it to be, uh, I wanted it to make more sense to look at it from the top. So, So here's what it's going, what we're, oops, I'm not showing you what we're going to be looking at. So here's what the function looks like with the X and Y. Let's jump over to the equations. I've got T squared. Oh, I had T squared. I got T squared in the X and T cubed in the Y. So here's going to be our view from the positive Z axis. We're, remember, with a parameterized curve, we're not just getting a curve, we're getting direction. I set my window to go from negative 10 to 10, because that would give me everything on, that's going to be on the screen. And then we can imagine what, goes, what happens as t goes off to negative infinity and t goes off to positive infinity. So let's take a look at the graph. I also like using the TI-84 for this, because it's slow enough that you can watch the graph form. And so there it is. So what we're seeing is the x coordinate coming down from infinity, turning around at zero, and then heading off back towards infinity. We're seeing the y coordinate come up from negative infinity, hit zero, and then go up from negative infinity again. So in y, we see the motion going all up. In the x direction, we see the motion coming down and then back up again. So from infinity down to zero and then back up to infinity. 
So it makes sense looking, putting the X and Y together. That's what's going on in this graph. We attempt to draw it, which is always a bad idea. Not only are we getting this curve, but we're getting a direction. The curve is traveling towards the origin, bounces off the origin, and then continues to go up. Notice that the x, the x coordinate starts off at infinity, goes down to the origin, and then goes back up. Starts off infinity, goes down to the origin, and goes back up. Notice that the y coordinate goes up towards the origin from, from negative infinity up towards the origin and then off towards positive infinity, up to negative, negative infinity up towards the origin then off towards positive infinity. Any questions? So here's gonna be the view from the positive Z axis looking down. There's our view from the positive Z axis looking to the origin. If we shift our view over to the positive x-axis looking to the origin, then y is gonna to head to the right and z will go up. So here's the view from the positive x-axis looking to the origin. So from the positive X axis, we're not gonna see this motion of the X going down and then up again. We're just gonna see what happens with the Y. So we're just going to be looking at T cubed in the horizontal coordinate and T in the vertical coordinate. Uh, this is a good question because I haven't, I didn't do this yesterday, but uh, how would it look from the negative Z axis? Would it be reflected across one of the axes? And the answer is yes. So if we look at this from the bottom, I should have, oh, if I had clear paper, that'd be awesome. But if we look at this from the bottom, if we look at this from the bottom, it would depend on where we drew the X and Y axes. So remember, we don't wanna fix in our mind that right is always positive and up is always positive. Happened to work out in this case, but if we look from the positive Y axis, looking to the origin, if we move from the, where this X is to where this Y is, then all of a sudden I'm drawing the X axis positive in the other direction. So what we want to notice, if we're looking at Y and Z, if I put the on the Y on the horizontal and Z on the vertical, I'm just looking at a T cubed and a T. Let's see what happens if I put a T cubed 
fortunately for us, the graphing calculator is set up with x uh, positive, uh, positive, right is positive and up is positive. So if I move my t cubed into the first coordinate and just t into the second coordinate, we get this graph. Notice that this one looks like, uh, this one doesn't look like the cube that we had before because the cube that we had before, we were drawing y as a function of t. Now we're drawing y on the, x, on the horizontal and z on the vertical. So since y is on the horizontal, I'll list that first and z is on the vertical, I'll list that second. And we know that the direction that y comes, go, y comes from negative infinity up towards zero and then speeds away from the origin back towards positive infinity. Then if we look from the positive y-axis towards the origin, so now the positive y-axis is coming out towards the origin. And then from this view, if we're standing at the positive y-axis and z is going up, that's gonna spin my x-axis looking around this way. So from the positive y-axis, and we're also gonna to look to the origin. Now I've got my x is, the square and my, or my horizontal is the squared and my vertical is just the line. So if I go in and I trade, turn this, let's turn this one off. If I uh, put X squared in first and Z, sorry, t squared in on the horizontal and t on the vertical. Now in this picture, we've got the positive x going to the right, but what we want is the positive x going to the left. Fortunately for us, this is all symmetric. So this is what we're gonna be looking at. And we're gonna see x come from in negative infinity up to zero, or sorry, from positive infinity down to zero, and then back up to positive infinity. One of the reasons that this is happening, if we start to write functions, if we start to write functions of things, um, if I'm gonna try to write a function, let's say, um, since Z is vertical, Z is some function of Y. Notice that Z is equal to T. So let's think about Z as a function of Y. Notice that Z is equal to T and y is equal to t cubed. Here's the other reason that I just made z just like go up boring like this so we can make this substitution. So if z is equal to t and y is equal to t cubed, that means that y is equal to z cubed. But if I wanna write z as a function of y, I can turn this around and say z is the cube root of y. So we're not surprised that we got this cube root function. Similarly, 
if I want to write z as a function of x, since my z is vertical, uh, z is t and x is t squared. So in this case, it's easy to put together. Um, x is equal to z squared. And if we turn this into a function, we can't because z squared is not invertible, but we can get two functions out of it. We can say that z is plus or minus the square root of x. And that's what we're getting, plus the square root of x and minus the square root of x. Any questions? Comments? Any thoughts? So we're thinking about this a lot more. Uh, at the beginning, and we're going through this much more deliberately, just looking at this one, one curve and trying to think about what the curve looks like, at least in part. So that raises a question, what kind of calculus questions are we gonna ask about this curve, which is a position at a particular time? This is the great thing about Calc 3. Once you've been through Calc 1 and Calc 2, Calc 3 kind of writes itself. So if we have, for example, position at time t, We use R for position, because that makes sense. We want to pick a letter that does not appear in the word position. It's like the same rules for uh, coming up with the word for this uh, letter for the slope. We use M for slope, because M does not appear in the word. But the rules change for velocity, where we'll just use the V for velocity. Mathematicians are weird about picking letters. I was wondering if naming like R of T is like the original, oh, my name is John, but with a silent Q. You know what I mean? It's like parents want some unique spelling for their kid's name. It's like, oh, let's just spell it differently. I was wondering if parents that do that, like choose an alternate spelling for their kids. I wonder if they play D and D. And they go, I want to name my character this, but I'll just spell it differently. You know what I mean? Anyway, we've got a position at time t. And so the calculus tells us exactly what we're going to be doing next. We want to calculate the velocity. We know that velocity is the derivative of the position. So we could say, find a velocity vector at time t equals two.
This is a thing that we do in calculus. If we're given a position as a function of time, we take the derivative and plug in a particular time, and that will be the velocity uh, at that time. What we haven't talked about is how to take the derivative of this velocity, or sorry, the derivative of this vector. So what we're going to do is guess. How are we going to find the velocity vector at time t? How are we going to write the derivative of this position vector at time t? At least we're getting away from these partial derivatives. We're back to a function, a function of just one variable, t. So I can go back to my Newtonian prime notation. Here's the thing that we might guess. 2t i plus 3t squared j plus 1k. Now, if we want to know the velocity at time t is equal to 2, we just plug in 2. So the velocity at 2 will be just 2 times 2i plus 3 times 2 squared j plus 1k. Other reason I wanted a t to be, uh, z to be just t is I wanted uh, to not have to plug in the 2 in the k direction. So at time t is equal to two, the particle is moving at in the direction four i, two squared is four times three is something, 12 plus 12 j plus one k. This is not the only thing that we did with derivatives. We also did things like find the equation of the line tangent to the curve at a given point. So to write the equation of a line, we need a point and a direction. We need a place to start and a direction to go. Here's our direction to go. That's going to be our slope. We just need a point to start. So we'll just find r of 2. So our starting point is going to be 4i plus 8j plus 2k. And now we've got the two things that we need, a place to start and a direction to go. So the tangent line we're going to start at the point 4i plus 8j plus 2k that's going to be fixed so i'm going to write 4i plus 8j 
plus 2K. That's going to be my fixed starting point. And then I'm going to add this direction vector a bunch of times. in a process that has not changed since we first talked about lines way back in the long, long ago in the halcyon days of algebra when life was simple. Algebra usually comes at the time when you're like, like uh, most of us encounter algebra like between the ages of 12 and 14. That's also the prime nostalgia building time. Most of us will be nostalgic for the music we were listening to between the ages of 12 and 14. So if uh, you wanna try to get me with nostalgia, if you know I was born in 1971, 1971 plus 14, 85, if you look for stuff around 85, you say, I bet I can, you can tell what Leach is listening to. But algebra doesn't stick like the music that we were listening to. No one gets nostalgic for algebra. You know what I mean? It's weird. That's why all these 80s properties are so popular right now. Because the people that are nostalgic for the things that are in the mid 80s are old enough to be in positions of power in the entertainment industry that they say, you know what? I loved, uh, I'm gonna set the next Wonder Woman movie in 1984 because I remember the 80s as being a good time. That, that's also a good indication of what the people look like that are nostalgic for the 80s. You know what I mean? So we didn't do anything new here. I defined a function that represented the position at a given time. We took the derivative in pieces this case, in this case, in each direction, took the derivative and plugged in a time to find the velocity at a given time. And then I put that together with a position at a time to create a tangent line. And the tangent line is the same kind of thing that we had before. Start here, go this direction. B plus M times X. just wrote y equals mx plus b with vectors instead of, instead of m, where we cheat because the slope really includes two directions, uh, two directions. Slope is rise divided by run. We can get away with that because we've only got two. And so we just make a ratio of those two. But now our direction is described with three numbers. So we just break it out into vectors. Any questions? Comments? Snide them all. I guess we could look at equation of a line as start off at zero B and add the run and the rise times X. Well, I wouldn't want to use X and Y because I'm these are the X and Y. T, there. Start here, go this direction. Any questions? Comments? Deep thoughts? Snide remarks?
Astounding observations? Requests for problems on the final? All right, that's gonna do it for today. Let's see, get this whole problem in view there. That's gonna do it for today and that's gonna do it for this week. I'll see y'all on Monday. Everybody have a good weekend and thanks for playing.